Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. 25-year-old female here. I met my fiancé in college at a party and we started dating. Ever since then, I've put up with my mother-in-law's attitude because I love my husband and was willing to put up with some drama. However, my mother-in-law made a mistake thinking she can control my life and marriage. But I am not someone who keeps manipulative control freaks in my life. So my mother-in-law has been pretty rude to me as long as she has known me. I ignored all the warnings my own mom and best friends gave me about marrying someone when their family doesn't like you. But now, obviously, I'm the one suffering the consequences. I wish I had listened to them, even though my relationship is great. My mother-in-law emerges as the elephant in the room every time we have a discussion about our future. I'll go into some more details to let you guys know exactly what was going on. My fiancé broke up with his long-term girlfriend in college. They had been dating for six years and broke up because long distance was not working out for either of them. They gave it a shot and it didn't work out. It was an amicable breakup and the girl is actually married now. She even has two adorable kids, so trust me when I say there's absolutely nothing between my husband and his ex. So my fiancé was fine with the breakup and his ex was fine with the breakup. The only person who took it badly was his mother for some reason. My mother-in-law really liked that girl and wanted them to get married. I don't really know exactly why she was so insistent on who her son would marry, but one reason can be that the girl belongs to the same ethnicity as my husband and his family. Every time my fiancé went back home from college during holidays and stuff, she would ask him about that girl and if they were considering giving the relationship another chance or something. He said no, and she just didn't take it well. He dated casually in college before he met me and didn't tell his mom to avoid drama. I started dating him when we were in our last year of college, and after dating for a while, we realized that we work really well together as a couple and wanted to be serious. That's when we decided to tell each other's families. My family was totally chill with it and loved him from the day I introduced them. I wish I could say the same about his family, though. He had been dating for almost two years when I finally met his family on a Christmas dinner. I had done my best to look decent. I wore a nice dress and had asked my husband a lot of questions about his culture so I could have good conversations with his family and not be an awkward outsider. I was so excited. But the evening was a total disaster. His mom was cold from the very beginning. I could literally feel her judging me from head to toe. I tried complimenting her, initiating conversations, and doing practically everything to be likable, but she just wouldn't warm up to me. It was such a bummer, and I didn't know what to do. At the end of the night, after we said goodbye and left, my fiancé could see how upset I was and told me not to worry about it, and that she'll probably warm up to me in some time. The rest of his family, my father-in-law and fiancé's 16-year-old little sister, are fine. They aren't super warm and welcoming, but they've always been more or less nice to me. I was hopeful that my mother-in-law would come around, but even after meeting more times, she was just as cold and distant, so I just gave up on her, ever liking me. I've even had some minor fights with my fiancé about this, and he has always agreed that my mother-in-law is wrong for acting the way she does. But he says that he can't control her actions, and that I only see her a few times a year anyway. I get what he's trying to say, so I just let it go. It's not like I have to live with her or something, and I told myself it's okay to put up with her drama on the rare occasions I see her. Over the years, our relationship can be described as civil and nothing else. I was okay with that, but I never really thought that she would be outright hostile and do something that would force me to do something drastic as well. So my fiancé proposed to me six months ago and we've been planning our wedding ever since. 
My bridesmaids and even my mom warned me and told me to be careful about marrying him when it was clear that my mother-in-law will never fully accept me into their family. But I didn't listen to them. I thought that it would be fine because it was not as if she was actively trying to hurt me or something. Word of advice to any future brides. Have a definite conversation with your partner if you feel like you're being mistreated by his family. And always, always listen to your friends because they've got your best interest in mind. When my fiancé told his mom that we're engaged, they actually had a minor fight. My husband got mad and told her that it's his life and she can't choose who he ends up with, and I thought that would be it. I was so wrong. My mother-in-law might have shut up back then, but she was building up a whole plan in her mind this whole time. So my wedding is the day after tomorrow, and she did something horrifying today. My husband is out running wedding errands and I was in the apartment alone. I was just organizing around the house to distract myself from the wedding nerves when I heard the doorbell. I thought my fiancé was done early with his work or something and opened the door with a big smile. You can imagine how quickly my smile disappeared when I saw my mother-in-law standing there looking as bitter as she always does. I told her that her son is out. And she told me that she wants to talk to me about something. Well, that couldn't be good, and I knew it. I asked her to come in, and we both sat in the living room as I braced myself for whatever she was about to say. I knew it wouldn't be good, but nothing could have prepared me for what was coming. Guess what she pulled out of her bag? A contract. A marriage contract, to be specific. She told me if I was going to be her daughter-in-law and became a permanent part of the family, there are some things that I must agree to. I was completely baffled. What on earth was she even talking about? I asked her if she has finally lost her mind and if her son knows about it, and she told me that this was between the two of us. She told me that if I don't agree, she will go no contact with her son and he will resent me forever. I was under so much stress. I just didn't know what to do and signed it. My wedding is just in a day. I don't know what to do. Should I tell my fiancé? I've also been thinking of finally ending things once and for all by giving my husband a public ultimatum and exposing my mother-in-law in front of everyone. W-I-B-T-A if I expose my mother-in-law? I'm so grateful for all the support I've received from you guys. Makes me feel good to know that there are other people who have been in my shoes. Some of you have told me to break up with my fiancé and end it all here, but I love him and I do want to give our relationship a chance. If things go bad, I'll be able to tell myself that I did my best at least. The rehearsal dinner is tonight. Wish me luck, guys. My husband chose me. I'm so incredibly happy. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this update, so I'll jump right into what happened. So for our rehearsal dinner, we had a mini projector at the venue. We were supposed to have a small slideshow of happy moments from our relationship as a sort of reminder of how far we have come. It was supposed to have pictures and videos to celebrate our relationship, but I decided to use it for my ultimatum. When all the guests were done eating, I decided to go for it. I stood up, asked everyone to stick around for a minute because I having something important to say. No one knew what was going on. I started by saying how much I love my husband and want to spend my life with him. Then I got into the only thing that makes me question my love, and that's my mother-in-law. Every face looked horrified. I could see my mother-in-law turn red with anger. Before she could say anything, I told everyone that my mother-in-law had come to me yesterday with a contract that I had to sign. I started the slides and all the ridiculous conditions like spending every holiday at her place, naming the first female granddaughter after her, and quitting my job after two children were highlighted. My fiancé looked horrified. I turned to him and told him that I love him, but he needs to make a choice between me and his mother, because if this was how I was going to be treated, I would not marry him. He looked mortified. He told me that he'll talk about it in private after the guests leave. After everyone had left and it was just family around, 
He told me that he had no idea about this contract and would never let his mom approach me with it if he knew. He told me that he loves me and genuinely didn't know that I was so bothered by her behavior. He promised to choose me forever and told me that my mother-in-law won't be at the wedding and I won't have to see her until she apologizes. So that's it, Reddit. I'm glad I decided to do this. Thank you for all your advice. My wedding was indeed mother-in-law free. She caused a huge scene before the wedding, of course. Even on the day of the wedding, she called up my husband saying he's abandoning his own mother and a lot of other drama, but he didn't listen. I walked down the aisle knowing I'm going to be marrying my best friend, and we couldn't be happier. NTA, she absolutely deserves the public call out. I think it's very creepy how obsessed she is with her son's relationships and dating life. It's not normal, and I'm glad you stood your ground, OP. I think ESH. Your mother-in-law is horrible, and I'm sorry you had to go through that, but I think humiliating her in front of all your guests was too much. You could have just shown the contract to your husband and let him make the decision. After my parents divorced and my father retired, he has been depressed and on a downward spiral for a while. One thing he does have is money, but that was not helping him. He tried meeting women and wasn't having much luck because, frankly, he wasn't looking in his own age range. He always wanted to have more kids. My mom only wanted two. And now he wants more kids even at his age. Somehow or another, he met May. He won't tell me how, and I didn't hear about her until he had already asked her to marry him, without ever meeting in person. May is from a country in Southeast Asia where fraud, identity theft, trafficking, and crime of all kinds is rampant. I told my father under no circumstances was he to go to May's country, so he agreed to meet her for a vacation in a third country, known safe tourist destination. She could get a visa to. The meeting went well, so we agreed to have a family vacation in that same tourist destination where my sibling and I could meet May. May also brought who she said was her 13-year-old son. May is nice enough in the meeting, but told several lies about inconsequential things, which put me on guard. For example, May said she had been an exchange student in another Asian country where she went to learn that language. I also was an exchange student in that country to learn that language and began speaking it. May was silent. There were a few random things like that. Then there was her son. That person is not 13 years old. He's small, he's slight, especially compared to Westerners, but he is a grown man. He speaks in a falsetto, but I heard him on the phone when he thought he was alone. Yes. I did follow him, and he was not using the falsetto at all. I also followed May when May took a phone call and something very similar took place. There is a weird vibe between May and her son, and after I heard them speaking on the phone, it made a lot more sense. I honestly believe the two of them are in a relationship, and let's just say, I don't think May has the ability to give my father the babies he wants as she is leading him to believe. May and her son both entered this country on passports with information that matches their claimed identities. But May's country is absolutely notorious for producing false documentation and identity theft. I told my sibling this, and they basically think I am the scum of the earth for saying or even thinking any of these things. They think I should butt out and leave my father to his happiness. I, on the other hand, think my father's happiness is a lie, and at best, May could take him for half his retirement savings, and at worst, my father could be convinced to go to a country where a lot worse could happen to him. NTA Humans are stupid when they are infatuated and are taught to give things, situations, the benefit of the doubt. I believe your concerns are 100% legitimate and you need to bring this up to him. 
Sit down and explain how these scams work and how you can see that you believe he's being targeted. Be thorough about the inconsistencies you've found and explain that it's out of love and concern for him. Either he will listen and begin to question or he will be upset and angry. You need to be able to accept either outcome. NTA. You gave her a chance and met her and her son. You noticed inconsistencies and odd behavior. I agree with what others are saying. It sounds like it's time to get a professional PI involved because sadly there are people who will try and scam others out of their money and possessions and it's especially easy for crooks to find victims through online dating, which I'm 100% positive that's how your father met May. Your sibling is kind of an AH for getting upset that you are suspicious and your father clearly has rose glasses on and is too blind to see. Please don't drop it and hire a PI. May could be legit or she could be a con artist who is willing to do whatever it takes to get what she wants. Also, update this if you can. Would love to know how it goes. I'm 30 female and my husband, 30 male, recently got married. My husband's family are well off financially. For our wedding, his parents gave us a new house as a surprise gift, but the house is still under my father-in-law's name. My husband asked me to move there since, well, it is a nice house, a nice neighborhood, and very close to where my in-laws live, and I'm on board. We used to live in an apartment that we rented together and split all the bills and rent 50-50. I've been saving for a big size down payment for a house before our wedding and my husband agreed that he's the one to pay for the mortgage. That was our initial plan. My husband is a consultant in a top accounting firm. His latest client is a big architectural firm. One thing led to another and he went ahead to their interior designer and conceptualized the house interior and determined the budget, etc. And he told me that the budget to furnish the house is close to the down payment that I've been saving. And he expects me to pay for all of it. And then I told him no. I said the house is still in his dad's name. What I feel is we only got a rent-free house. It's not our house. And I don't want to drain my savings to furnish it. I would pitch in, but not paid for all of it. My husband said, well, it's a gift from his parents. They won't ask us to give the house back in the future. It's only his dad's name, but it's ours. And he feels his part of pitching in is by having parents that provide the house. That was way above our initial budget. And my part of pitching in is to fully furnish the house. We got a prenup and it says that all our assets will be divided accordingly. If we bought it together, then split 50-50. And the assets and debts we have before our marriage, the other spouse just needs to know and didn't have any rights, liability over it. So I said that the money for the down payment is my asset before marriage. He doesn't have a say in it. I could use the money to buy a new car, luxury travel, or invest it and gain interest from the money. Instead of buying furniture or build a closet and a kitchen that value will decrease in the future in the house that is not even mine. I told him that he got two other siblings. They're not married yet. We don't know if they'll get a house too in the future. If, God forbid, something happens to his parents, his siblings could also claim this house too. My parents used to have a messy divorce and when he passed without leaving a will, it was a shit show. My uncle fought with my sister, his kid from another woman also wants to claim stuff and it resulted in me not on speaking terms for a decade to my paternal side of family. I know his family are unlike mine, they're not after blood and money, but I just don't want to risk it. So AITA, if I don't want to pay to furnish the free house? NTA, if his parents had given you the house, then it would be in your name. The fact is they could kick you out any time and they would benefit from the money you put into it while you will lose that money and not be able to afford the deposit on a house of your own. 
There was an article a few days ago where someone rented a place, spent tens of thousands fitting a new kitchen, bathroom, etc., and they were then kicked out. Don't throw money away into a property you don't own. Painting, etc., is fine. Buy furniture that you can take with you and keep the receipts. NTA. It's pretty sus, in my opinion, to call it a gift, but keep it in father-in-law's name. Technically speaking, you're just a renter until the house is transferred to your husband, and he should be paying equally for any renovations to the house. You've also listed off a number of great points why you should be worried in the future. And just because his family isn't fighting over money now doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. I've known a few people who went from being calm and collected to frothing at the mouth when it comes to collecting their rightful inheritance.